I discovered that the only thing I've really ever been able to do without thinking about it is write. My break came when Betty Endicott, news director at WTTG in Washington, called me into her office and asked me to close the door one day. It was very clear all along I had to work. I had to support myself. Friends of mine who were uh, manual laborers and they had all different kinds of skills and mine was different. And I was in a series of jobs and I had an epiphany that I had to at least try something that I would always wanted to try. My late mother always used to say about uh, especially people on local news here in New York, you know I think you could do better than some of these people. I don't know what she based that on. So I loaded up what few belongings I had and I moved to Pittsburgh, Kansas. I worked at a small television station for 13 months and uh, I started making $168 a week uh, for a seven-day week, not to brag. I decided that after 13 months at this television station, surely other stations in the area were pining for my talents. I took a number of days off and burned those days off in a lot of waiting rooms. Television stations like KY3 in uh, Springfield, Missouri, all the TV stations in Tulsa, Wichita, Topeka, it kind of laughed me out of the major markets. I couldn't get hired. I had a resume reel, three quarter inch tape. Nobody was buying it, nobody was digging it. There were a lot of people just like me and I was unexceptional. My experiment in small market television had failed. I went bankrupt, I had to work out deals with all my credit card companies to pay it down $10, $20 a month. I was borrowing money, I lost my car. I was, I think, by any standard, poor. I decided the only place I could be guaranteed a job was uh, Washington, where I had worked and spent about a third of my life. I saw a classified ad at the Channel 5 independent station in Washington, which was then a Metro Media television station. This is Metro Media 5, Washington, D.C. And the ad was for a weekend Chiron operator. I had never operated the Chiron machine. I'd done everything else at the television station. Studio camera, ENG camera, the TK76. I had swept, I did uh, sports, I did weather, and of course I did news. So I figured I could learn Chiron. I could type quickly and I knew my way around a drop shadow. I brought the ad to WTTG Television on Wisconsin Avenue. I walked into the newsroom and said to the first person I met, I'm here to meet with the news director, is he in? And she said, you're talking to her. So that didn't start well. She introduced herself as Betty Endicott. She hired me as the weekend Chiron operator at that television station. And I just Chiron like hell wouldn't have it. The staff would gather in the news director's office to watch the broadcast, and they'd gather afterwards to talk about it. And I developed uh, a kind of a friendship as, as, as much as a weekend Chiron operator could with the news director. Here's my break. My break came when Betty Endicott, news director at WTTG in Washington, called me into her office and asked me to close the door one day. And she said, uh, they tell me you used to do this. You, you did on camera, you did small market television news. And I said, I said, yeah, I did. I, briefly, it was an experiment, a failed experiment. She said, do you have any tapes? And I said, well, they've long since been burned and taken to a licensed landfill facility outside of town. She said, who's the worst reporter on the staff that you've seen? And I said, Betty, you're kidding me. I, I'm your Chiron operator. What? If I had an opinion on that, what would it matter? She said, the answer is very important. And I thought for a moment, looked to recheck that the door was closed, and I gave her the name. Never repeated it since then. And she said, uh, you know, you're right. That reporter is gonna come off the air, and I'd like you to, to start. I'd like you to cover Northern Virginia. And I went on the air in the ninth largest market in the country. And I decided that this was it. These things don't happen outside Capra films.